All right, everybody. We've got the light bulb limiter in, the rectifier tube only. We're not gonna worry about the other two tubes until we power it on. I do have it connected to a speaker on purpose because I want to load on that. But effectively, we just went through, we validated everything on both this page. You can see all the yellow is us highlighting. Everything looks right. We didn't highlight those. Um, well, we did test oh, the on-off switch, but we'll know really quickly if the on-off switch works or not because we're about to turn on. But right now we're plugged into a light bulb limiter, which is behind. Let me make sure that's visible. It is, perfectly in frame. All right, so Angie's gonna flip the power switch right here and watch the bulb. You watch ready? the bulb. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. ready. Absolutely nothing. Oh no, the bulb is lit up here. Something. The bulb is lit up there. Okay. The light bulb number didn't actually light up at all. So we're running, okay, go ahead and turn it off. That means that we didn't actually run any excessive current and everything was fine. The light bulb number barely was even potentially visible. So now we're gonna unplug it from here. That's just a quick first test to make sure we don't have obvious heavy current drawing in a bad way, meaning we've kind of shorted something to ground or something is really wrong. Well, we don't, it didn't turn on. It did, the light bulb was on the front, the jewel, I could see it. Right, but that light didn't turn on. That's because it had no current draw of any kind that it could actually trigger off of. Oh, uh, okay. So, you're switched off, I've plugged power in, and now I, I want you to... And this is when we do not start to throw yes. fingers in here. Yes, so we'll have a warning, we're turning this on, this has all got hundreds of volts in it, we do not want to touch anything that's going to electrocute us, so we have to be very careful. We're going to, I'm going to get a... Chopstick? Well, we get a shot stick if we need to to test stuff, but for now, I'm assuming everything's going to work out okay. So I'm going to quickly connect this to two locations. One will just be to chassis ground, which can actually be that wire right that there. Kind of in the way, but... And then the other one, everybody's watching live. We'll do it live. I'm going to connect <laughs> right down here. And what does that do? I can't reach it. I don't dare Be careful because we got the amp on. I don't. It's like not on on, but it's. I just want to. Oh. Um, Do you need to move out of the way? No, I just can't get a grip. It's not. I'm trying to think of how else I could connect. I guess I can connect it here because we'll still see voltage. It's not the first point of the power, but I want to see that we're getting voltage. So we're going to put this up to volts DC. Okay. And we're seeing only 2.4 volts, which is probably just capacitors. Oh, I need to. It's not on there. Oh, it is. It's off right now. Yes, it's off. Go ahead and turn it on now. All right. You ready? Yep. All right, power up, lights on. Do I want to Wait turn Wait for a minute, back, or the or voltage is, leave it. The voltage is climbing, we're at 11, 22. So the rectifier is conducting electricity now and now we're getting up to 200-ish volts. 300. And what's it supposed to go to? Uh, I'd have to look up the thing, I don't know off the top of my head, but it will be higher now because we don't have the tubes in, but this is a good sign, nothing's smoking. Don't, oh yeah, you're fine. Go ahead and turn it off. We're gonna put the other tubes in now. I think we're in good shape, everything looks good, nothing's smoking and our voltages looked okay. So here's the power tube. Just put that, carefully don't touch anything here, put that in there. It won't hurt you to touch the tube pushing it in there, you just don't want to touch the, the inside of the chassis. Can I touch the outside yes, of the chassis? Yes, touch the outside of the chassis. I'll put some. All right, and then we want it to the, the preamp tube, 12AX7. And you have to kind of look for those two missing holes and line those up with that. I'm just kind of pushing away as you go. I think you might have gotten it in pretty good. It's not all the way down. It's supposed to be all the way down in there. Or? Can you see it? Yeah, it's. There it goes. Now it's in. Okay, so now we're going to turn it back on again. You'll see that voltage is, I think, three. What do we see? Three eighty or three ninety. When yeah. you turn it on now, it will be lower because okay. the tubes will start drawing current. All right. Yep. Go ahead and turn it on. That's very low volume. She just barely turned it on, but that's okay. And we want to see it. It's up to three hundred and seventy-seven volts. See how it's down by about 20 or so volts? It's coming yeah. down even more because this the power tube's conducting. It. That's okay. <laughs> That's just what was that? <laughs> that was a little bit of squeal. Okay, it scared the shit out of me. It's okay. Um, <laughs> let me think. Made me squeal. Yeah. So <laughs> the squeal, what would be the squeal? Um All right, we're gonna stop and think for a minute. <laughs> okay. But that squeal tells us something is maybe wired a little wrong. So we'll come back in a second. Okay, so we're recording and that squeal is negative feedback. I knew it was. I just wanted to stop and think about it for a second. So sadly, in, in anytime you use a feedback, I will show this on the screen. We did the bad thing and assumed that this red, it was colored red on the original and blue on this one, but that can actually be swapped on accident if they do it wrong. 
So what's happened is we're getting positive feedback instead of negative feedback. So we have to switch these. Now the sad part was we cut this pin three really short and right next to it. So we have to desolder that and run it a, a, a longer wire to it and then connect it into this pin here. And then the pin that was here, we'll switch around and connect it in. But we're not gonna cut it short initially until we do another test. And once that's good, if it squeals gone, we're then going to cut it shorter and resolder it. But for now, all right, we're back. You can see the big wires hanging loose now. We've got the red and the blue ones swapped. Can you see it in the thing? Yeah, I think so. Yep. So we're gonna just quickly now power it back on again, but I have to plug the, the power back in. And then we will- Plug our ears. It shouldn't squeal this time because we fixed the feedback problem. So. Crossing lots of fingers. All right. Go ahead, fire it up. Ready? Yep. Do you want the things back on there or does that matter? No, we had, we were getting good voltages. Squeal is gone. Well, hang on, it took a second. Last, it took like 10 seconds before it squealed. No squealing. Let's plug in a guitar. So turn it off for you to plug it in? Don't turn it off, but just turn the volume down to next to zero real quick. Alright, All right, turn it back on. Okay. I just turned it up a little bit. This guitar is probably not tuned. right now so we'll we're gonna shut it back off we're gonna reconnect those wires more tightly now that we know that's the right way and then we will see if that makes also the noise go away so we'll come back to you in just a second all right we're turning it on again now that we've shortened the leads up and we're gonna listen for kind of hum and whatnot as well now but that's on zero volume okay it's still warming up a little See right here, we've got almost no volts. Oh, now it's starting to shoot up. We're at 10 volts. It's starting to conduct 40, 50, 80, 90, 100, 200, 280, 90, 300. So this is our main B plus rail. We're getting up and stabilizing near 344, 345 probably. where we can audibly hear hum. I heard the sound over here when you're touching it. Super loud, but it's there. Um, another thing I'm going to try. It's much quieter there. So, this is a good sign. Nothing plugged in. We're at max volume. It's dead silent. So, that means the amp in and of itself has got no noise. Okay. So, it's the guitar? Um, the guitar being plugged in is what's adding noise. There's something just fell. What is that? I don't know. It's a like piece a, of oh, it's the almost like a piece of the ceramic. porcelain or the ceramic. Yeah. Anyway. Oh no. It's okay. It is. It broke somehow. It makes me 
said. Okay. Did they get it too hot? No, ceramic can take thousands and thousands of degrees. So this is at max volume, and obviously I'm not playing anything, but it could literally just be my guitar. I've got a really kind of a noisy guitar here. Yeah. That's at max volume, it's not really horrible. This is input one, which is the higher volume. humbuckers on this, but I kind of wanted these P90s to hear what it sounds like, but I think that's, hear how when I'm moving it now it's changing significantly, because that's the pickups the guitar could get. Like. Now the lights in this room may be noisy, I don't know, but ultimately, So it tends to be really, really noisy. If I'm down in my garage, it's way quieter or up in my upstairs. So we're going to have one final video we'll show. We've got a, a chassis, I mean, a cabinet ordered from Mojo Tone and an 8 inch speaker. We'll wire all that up and uh, let you guys get a, a listen to that as well. So we'll see you at that point. That may be a little while. This video series mostly is about this, but we'll let everybody hear, get a hear on, or a hear, a listen on that as well. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Angie. See you, showed everybody you can do it. Bye.